So for today's video, I had a kind of weird idea to potentially improve YouTube videos in a way that would benefit a lot of people, especially the more cinematic lifestyle travel vlogger kind of people and people who like different aspect ratios. But it could also make videos incredibly like obnoxious if people abused it. It's a weird experiment and I just wanted to share. TubeBuddy is the best tool you can get to manage your YouTube channel. You can update videos in bulk, optimize your SEO, syndicate to social media, back up your metadata, and more, all with a simple browser extension. Head to eposvox.com slash TubeBuddy to learn more and download it for free. So back during the heyday of PC file sharing in the early 2000s, the days of LimeWire and FrostWire, I encountered a video file that did something I'd never done before. When I played it in my media player of choice, and back then, it might have still been VLC, uh, which isn't my media player of choice now, but that probably was back then, the video file actually changed size while I was watching it. So I was watching the main video, I honestly have no clue what it was at this point, probably some funny comedy thing or something like that. You know, it was a 4x3, 800x600, I'm just making this up, but you know, resolution. And then for a little like branded outro kind of thing that whoever uploaded the file added onto it, it shrunk. The media player, the actual physical dimensions of the video file actually shrunk for the second clip. I'd never seen anything like this before and every time I bring it up with people, I never really hear anyone who encounters this very often or ever at all. And it's always stuck in my head as something that I found super interesting and something I wanted to try to recreate one day or check out and use for something cool in the future. Specifically, more recently, I thought this would benefit people who like to implement black bars to make a more cinematic aspect ratio in their videos. I make fun of this from time to time and I get really annoyed when videos do this. And I've made a few videos kind of talking about ways that if your entire video is letterboxed, you can make it a better viewing experience for people on non 16 by 9 displays by just uploading in the native aspect ratio. And here recently, 2 by 1 or 18 by 9 aspect ratio videos have become more common to optimize for a mobile audience that is mobile phones these days. Mine is still 16 by 9 because mine's older and budget oriented, but phones these days are moving towards that 18 by 9 and 19 by 9 aspect ratio wider screen. And if you wanted your video to get more cinematic in the middle of the video, you could potentially have it change sizes in the middle of the video. I thought that would be really cool. So I put together an experiment trying to look for software that would let me do this because traditional video editing software you have a static dimension set for the resolution of your video file set and your project settings and your sequence settings and your render settings. You only get one option for what the final entire video file is. So I needed a way to put basically two different size videos together. My first stop was a program called AVI DMOX, which has been recommended to me a few times. It's a very old tool for basically splitting up files based on the keyframes in the file to be able to split them up or do different things with them or trim them off or combine them without having to re-encode because it put just puts the files back together in the file container without having to re-encode because file containers are almost like folders for the actual video codecs inside and more often than not you can literally just do like a file copy between them. This is how remuxing in OBS Studio works where you take the MKV recorded file and turn it into an MP4 file. It's just a file copy between those two containers. So I thought this might be the next step. It does have an append option, which I've been using for my old mini DV and eight millimeter tape backups. When they get split up into multiple files, I can use the append option to put them together and then use the trim off option to chop off the glitchy start and ends of the tapes and be good to go. So I thought, okay, so I could just sit here and take a file of one resolution and a file of another resolution and append them together because it's not doing any re-encoding. So I rendered out a few sample clips at 9 by 16 aspect ratio, 16 by 9, 2 by 1, and then 4 by 3, I believe, and went to AVI Demux and immediately it gave me an error saying you cannot append files that have different dimensions. It is not an option. But it pointed me to the right direction, which was that FFmpeg has an option for concatenate, concatenate, I, I never say that right, concatenate, which lets you basically string multiple video files together in one final video file, which is different than appending. Basically, it makes one giant video file that has multiple video files kind of chapters 
and so your media player switches between them instead of treating it as one video file. I'm not entirely sure of 100% of the di differences here, but I'll have the FFmpeg documentation linked below. But this is what I need, is FFmpegs concatenate capabilities. I'm still probably saying that totally wrong. So with the FFmpeg command, what you first need to do is gather your different video files in a folder that you wish to combine, basically, and then make a text file. And I just called it mylist.txt. And then you put file and then the path to the file that you wish to combine on each line. So file 16x9.mp4, file 9x16.mp4, file 4x3.mp4. And you can either use the global path or the relative path. Since I'm keeping everything in one folder, I'm using the relative path, so I don't have any folders. I just have the file names. And then save that. And then open up FFmpeg in your command prompt. Navigate to that folder. So for me, that's g slash renders. And then FFmpeg-f concat. And then dash i mylist.txt or whatever your txt file is, dash c, copy, and then your output file name. So for me, that was just output.mp4. If the paths are not relative, you do need dash safe zero thrown in there before the dash i, just for file path information. And what this will do is string your files together into one bigger video file. And this worked for me. Now granted in MPC, Black Edition, I think is the one I have installed on my computer at the moment, this did not work. It was all, I believe, a 16 by, no, it was all a two by one aspect ratio file, which I guess was the first or the last file in the string. And everything else was stretched out to fit that aspect ratio and it looked horrible. And I thought I was defeated. I thought this was not the option that I was looking for. But by opening it up in VLC, which seems to be more competent at handling different pixel aspect ratios and different aspect ratios in general, because my 720 by 480 four by three files show up as a stretched pseudo 16 by nine in MPC as well. So VLC seems to handle this better. Opening it up in VLC, and you can see every time it switches files, it is changing the physical aspect ratio and size of the video. It knows what it's doing. However, if you upload it to YouTube, the same thing that happens in MPC happens here. YouTube displays it as a single, I believe, just 16 by 9 video file, and every other instance of the videos are stretched and skewed out to fill the frame instead of automatically adapting. Now, this is what I expected. I got kind of hopeful because YouTube's video player is actually pretty adaptive to other aspect ratios, which is why I recommend uploading native aspect ratios instead of cropping off your black bars. But I thought this might be a cool idea. So instead of discovering a cool hidden feature that YouTube can do, I'm simply kind of submitting it as a feature request that I would like to see YouTube implement in their video player, and they would have to change how they interpret video files on the whole so that, for example, I can have a 4x3 segment of my video where I'm doing like a retro 4x3 thing, and it changes to true 4x3 for viewers. And for example, again, if I'm having a normal 16 by nine vlog and then I wanna do a cinematic B-roll sequence, I cut to two by one or 21 by nine or 2.35 to one, and it adjusts the video player to that lower aspect ratio and squeezes that out a bit and adapts better. And for example, if you're watching a 16 by, think, think about the movie theater experience. If you've ever gone to a movie theater with a true widescreen screen or that just wasn't lazy, Typically the previews, the, the, the quiet previews before the real previews start as a 16 by nine frame. And they have like curtains covering the sides of the screen so that you only see the 16 by nine frame that those previews are playing at. And then when the movie starts, the curtains move to the side, the projector gets wider, and then you see the full widescreen movie previews and then the movie at that wider screen. And it's a really cool experience and it looks really cool. You could do that with this video player. You could have it set up so that especially on wider screens, if you're watching on an ultra wide or a phone that has an 18 by nine, two by one or 19 by nine screen, you have a normal, you know, 16 by nine video happening. And then when you get to a cinematic part, it basically just widens on the phone to fill out your phone screen or on an ultra wide monitor to fill out the ultra wide monitor screen. That would be a really phenomenal effect and something you could implement even on you know, cinematic kind of TV show-esque content, like say Planet Earth. You start out with like a narr narrator part that's normal bit, and then you get to the nature animal part and it opens up widescreen and gets all super fancy and cinematic. I think that would be really phenomenal. And basically all they have to do is make the video player adapt to these multiple concatenated video files as it goes. And I think it's within the realm of possibility given that it's already adaptive to aspect ratios in the first place. But I say 
just make it adapt to that as if it's a very simple step and it could very much likely not be and I understand that. But this is a feature suggestion and just a cool thought experience, experiment and tech experiment that I wanted to explore. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Could you see this being useful? Of course it could be totally abused because you have people who have like every other video part be something different and just make it all glitchy and stuff, but that's with every feature. I mean, annotations were abused, but they were also super useful at the same time. Also, someone could get, when I talk about it opening up to widescreen, typically with just throwing some video files together, that would just have to be like cut. You know, it would have to be cut from one frame to another. But if someone wanted to get really fancy and export each individual frame, and I'm in the middle of researching how to do this with like an automatic resize script that cuts off a video, or cuts off an image file, up to a certain point, then you could string together each individual frame for a few seconds and have it smoothly transi transition from one aspect ratio to another and have that be like a transition spot where it opens up and then be the widescreen, which would be really freaking amazing. Let me know what you think again in the comment section down below. Hit the like button, subscribe for more tech education. My name is Epos Vox and I will see you in the next video. By the way, this video is a test of a new on-camera microphone for streamers. I do have a little bit of post-processing applied to make it sound a little bit nicer for my voice, but I am curious to hear what you think. It also keeps microphone out of frame here. It's obviously not going to sound good as my RE20 typically does, although I've gotten some complaints about how it sounds recently, which is just baffling to me and makes me question what's wrong with my processing settings in my DBX286S box, but hey, that's okay. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. My name's Eposvox. I already said all this. Bye bye.